10 years ago, when what I'm going to call the first modern electric vehicles were hitting the roads of the world, electric vehicles generally managed somewhere between 70 and 100 miles of range per charge. These days, the standard, or perhaps that should be acceptable range that people look for in an electric car, is far higher than that, with most new cars shooting for between 150 and 200 miles as a bare minimum range, and most going way above that. How far your car can travel per charge is, of course, dependent on many different things, from how large the car's battery pack is through to the aerodynamics and the efficiency of the vehicle itself, and the drivetrain and power electronics. And usually, when a car company announces a revision to a car's range or capabilities, it's because that company has upgraded the car's battery pack to a newer, higher, energy-dense one. I say usually because in the last few weeks, we've covered several companies that have seemingly managed to pull off the impossible, to get their electric cars to go further per charge without any physical changes to the car's battery pack and to drivetrains. We've even seen companies like Tesla, Jaguar and Audi magically unlock extra range via software updates. And so we've had some of you reach out and ask us how that's possible. After all, you can't add extra storage capacity to an existing battery pack, so what's going on? I'm not going to go into the specifics for each automaker here, but what I can share are some of the ways that such magical range expansions are possible. And they all boil down to a couple of key things. Revised battery management software, revised powertrain control software, and some software recalibration. Let's start with the batteries and the dirty little secret that you probably don't know. Full isn't full and empty isn't empty. Lithium ion cells don't like being completely full or completely empty. And while it is possible to technically charge a lithium ion cell to its fully charged voltage and then fully discharge it, doing so can prematurely age the cell. I'm not going to go into the electrochemical reasons for that here. But it's all to do with the way in which the cells operate at the molecular level and the heat that can cause irreparable change to their structure when they're overcharged or fully discharged. And to keep your car's battery cells operating for extended periods of time with as few problems as possible, your car doesn't actually charge its battery to its maximum state of charge, nor does it allow you to discharge it below a certain set level. This means that when your car says it's 100% full, it's probably technically between 80 and 90% full. And when it says it's fully empty, it could have anywhere from 10 to 20% cell level charge sitting there that you can't see or use. Exactly how much you can't use depends on the automaker and their approach to battery management. Some automakers err on the side of caution and hide a lot of the physical capacity of the car's battery pack. Some automakers let you use more. Some even switch how much you can use depending on which charging and driving mode you happen to be in. Automakers often start with more conservative battery management and then, after they've got plenty of data from their customers' cars, decide to unlock more capacity for use by their customers. The reason they do this is because unlike some battery chemistries, which have a very obvious and continual drop-off of voltage as the battery discharges, lithium-ion battery cells have a much more consistent cell voltage throughout the discharge process until the very last few percent, when the cell voltage drops off the metaphorical cliff, by which point you may have already damaged your battery cell. It's harder to detect those tiny drops in voltages, so automakers play it safe. When they have more data to predict how a battery will behave, they're more confident in how those cells will discharge, and therefore they give you more access to more capacity. Several automakers, including Tesla and Audi, have done just that, essentially moving the goalposts as to what the car considers full and what the car considers empty. Since it's a software tweak rather than a physical tweak, the change can be pushed, in a software update. Next, let's look at powertrain software, like battery management software, and honestly, pretty much everything else in a modern electric car. It is all down to the code. 
Back at the turn of the 20th century, electric cars used electromechanical controls to govern how much power went to their direct current motors. But today, it's all done using digital three-phase controllers that control how much power is sent to the motor by pulsing power on and off at the correct frequency to get the electric motor spinning just right. How much power is sent depends on where your foot is on the throttle. Again, I'm not going to go into the electronics of that in this video, but because the controller is running software that tells it how to interpret the input that it gets from the throttle and turn it into power delivery at the wheels, it's possible to tweak how the motor responds, not only to each position of the pedal, but also the speed at which the change in those positions occur, as in acceleration versus cruising versus slowing down. By changing how the car's motor controller software responds, automakers can make their cars more or less efficient, which is where software updates can come in. Again, it's possible to tweak how the motor controller works, changing how it provides power under acceleration or how it recovers energy using regenerative braking. And when paired with other software running on other parts of the power electronics system, you can dramatically improve how much energy your car uses and therefore how efficient it can be. In the case of Jaguar, that's exactly how it's helped increase the range of the iPACE. I'm honestly not sure if it unlocked extra battery capacity as well, because that's not clear from press material, but it has tweaked how its power controller works, including its throttle response, in order to operate more efficiently without dramatically impacting driving dynamics. It's also increased the maximum regenerative braking the car can engage, which of course increases the amount of energy that can be recuperated from movement and stored back in the battery pack for later use. And of course, this makes the iPACE a more energy efficient car overall. Are there any other updates that can magically give your car more range? Well, there are a few. I guess, technically, you could tweak the energy use of other in-car systems, including the heating, just to increase the range. But one that I haven't really talked about yet, and I probably should, is battery warming. If you tweak the battery pack heating of a car, you can make the battery pack a little more comfortable and thus not get pushed quite as hard under acceleration or regenerative braking. And while that physically doesn't change how much energy you can store in the battery pack, it can make it easier to get energy out and put energy back into the battery pack. It's one reason why Tesla and Porsche preheat their car battery packs prior to high current rapid charging, because it makes that charging more efficient. So that's it. While your car's battery pack will inevitably lose some capacity as it ages, hopefully at a very slow rate, it's possible to magically add more range by tweaking some of the software that your car runs. And that's how cars like the Jaguar I-Pace, Audi e-tron, and pretty much the entire Tesla family can suddenly wake up one day with more range than they had the day before. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Send us a coffee through Ko-fi or buy some swag from our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, keep evolving.